Welcome to Public Health IT. This will be a lecture on public health enabled electronic health records, decision support, and their role in the meaningful use of healthcare technology. This is Lecture C. Here is a quick reminder of the objectives from the prior lectures. Number one, discuss the New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene partnership with a commercial EHR vendor and how it created a public health enabled EHR. And two, describe the EHR meaningful use movement and how it could transform existing clinical public health practices. The learning objectives for the public health enabled electronic health records, decision support, and their role in the meaningful use of healthcare technology unit are number one, describe the strategies features and systems needed for public health agencies to define and build the necessary connections to EHRs as identified by the meaningful use legislation. And two, identify the essential features of four primary public health IT functions, including syndromic surveillance, bi-directional immunization registries, public health alerts, ad hoc reporting, etc. The second public health meaningful use function is immunization registries. What is the reason why a public health department tracks immunizations? Immunizations have been proven to be very effective to prevent the spread of many diseases, and yet too many children still do not receive the necessary protection, which leads to outbreaks such as that experienced during the 1990s measles outbreak in New York City. This may be for a variety of reasons but unfortunately, some of it could merely be administrative lapses. Without a centralized means of record-keeping, providers don't have up-to-date records of the shots children have and should receive. This could lead many providers to not immunize a child because they don't want to give duplicate shots that may be unnecessary for a patient or the wrong shot in a series. Thus, the need for a better record-keeping system with an immunization registry was created. The New York Citywide Immunization Registry provides the central resource for tracking the status of childhood immunizations. It enables healthcare providers to readily determine the immunization status of a child during a clinical visit and gives them a way to provide an official printout to parents if they need to take it to their child's school to prove their immunization history. And in addition, it provides a means of forecasting for a provider to know how many of the children under their care are overdue for scheduled vaccinations. These are all important features of an immunization registry. The law requires that providers report to the registry, otherwise it would not have any information. They must report within 14 days of administration all immunizations given to New York City patients under the age of 19. They also must report any historical immunizations the patient may bring in, say on a card or something from another provider to ensure that the record is as complete as possible. There are a number of methods by which a provider may report to a registry. They may use the online website version, which requires them to manually enter information, or they may use a less ideal form of electronic reporting by a batch web file submission to the repository website. Our preferred option would be that they use an EHR that supports a bi-directional web service exchange of data. This would allow information to be reported from the provider to the public health department and also from the public health department back to the provider's EHR, thus completing the cycle and allowing both sides to have a complete and up-to-date record of the patient. Here is a screenshot of the web file repository website by which a batch file may be submitted in the appropriate format and a provider can receive feedback to make sure that there are no errors in their submission. That is one way they can fill the reporting requirement. But, since we're talking about EHRs, and since EHRs are the way to get to meaningful use, let's discuss the EHR workflow around immunization data. It consists of a two-step process for entering immunization histories. First, the provider orders the immunization and this information is captured in the system. In this example, we're administering an influenza immunization. Second of all, the support staff completes the order by administering it to the patient and entering relevant information about the immunization just given, such as the lot number, the location where it was given, and so on. This information is completed and recorded in the system by the support staff, and the immunization record is now ready to be submitted. 
Now that we have seen the provider workflow around immunizations, where does the public health IT part come in? This is where it is necessary for the EHR vendor to have formatted the immunization information just captured from the provider into the standard format accepted by the central immunization registry in your area. It can then be sent in a unidirectional manner, meaning from the provider's office to the immunization registry for it to be recorded. That is the current limit of the capabilities of many of the EHR vendor systems that are out there. In an ideal world, EHR should be looking towards a bi-directional exchange of information. This was another future enhancement discussed in the Meaningful Use legislation. In a bi-directional system, a provider would get back the complete immunization history as recorded in the registry in a format that could be reconciled back with a patient's record in the EHR. In this manner, both systems have a complete set of immunization history for themselves, so they do not duplicate effort or do unnecessary follow-up. This is again another meaningful use of healthcare technology by avoiding duplicate testing, unnecessary follow-up, and eliminating unnecessary cost and expense of time and effort for both the provider and the patient. It is another illustration of how public health meaningful use functions can be used to inform patients, providers, and public health officials of what they need to do better to advance the health of the community. In summary, these bi-directional EHR systems will be able to receive and view CIR immunization history within the EHR itself. They will be able to view the actual public health department immunization lists and be able to reconcile this list with that in the EHR. The systems will be able to report that history back in real time and receive a confirmation that the information was received to be able to rectify any errors in the transmission. If you want further information, we have provided a link and a screenshot from Columbia Presbyterian Hospital here in New York City that has been using a web service to exchange information with the New York Citywide Immunization Registry. You are encouraged to do your own exploration of this and related systems as they can provide you with more details regarding how immunization registries function. The third and final feature set in our Public Health Meaningful Use Group is Public Health Alerts and Ad Hoc Reporting. Public health workers have needs. They need a way to communicate directly with clinical personnel for a variety of reasons. They need to be able to track disease outbreaks. They need to conduct research to know what is the health of the community. Unfortunately, they may even need to recall certain medications and vaccines that are harmful. All of these actions would necessitate good communication between public health and clinical personnel, which could be enhanced through technology. Additionally, Public health officials are always in need of sufficiently accurate data to know what is going on in a variety of community settings. While it is great that we've used surveys for decades to do much of the health assessment of a community, maybe there's something better, and maybe that something is the use of electronic health record technology. What could we do differently to communicate? Well, why not try public health alerts within an EHR? If public health officials had a means to distribute relevant messages targeted to providers at appropriate moments at the point of care, they could make their interventions more effective. So, for example, if they knew that a particular region of New York City might be experiencing an outbreak of a new strain of influenza, such as happened in 2009, they could send providers a message in a specific neighborhood to encourage them to do a more thorough checkup on patients that come in with a cough or a fever. This would be more relevant and useful compared to traditional means of sending out a mass email to all NYC providers which do not need it, or who might not see it in the right moment when they're actually interacting with a patient. The second important solution is the reporting and monitoring piece. If public health had a means to get aggregate count information of clinical disease states on demand from the clinics in an anonymized and secure manner, they could track community health in virtually real time. The Primary Care Information Project has been building these features with our Extension Center EHR vendor partners, and we are now in the process of testing them with production rollout expected by the end of 2010. The screenshots you can see here illustrates how we can alert as well as gather information from a provider's practice on a particular public health priority. In this example, we are checking up on a potential Legionnaire's outbreak in the Bronx area of New York City. The program shown here allows us to create a report that will be distributed to all the provider clinics within our program and report aggregate information back to us. 
we include a report name that will display to the provider as well as a report description that includes additional details that inform the provider of how to do a follow-up with public health officials if he suspects a case. To identify the right patients, we insert the necessary SQL code to extract from the EHR those patients with the appropriate conditions that we are interested in. In this case, it is patients in a particular zip code range where we want to alert the provider to do a more thorough follow-up on them during this outbreak period. This Legionnaire screening report is encapsulated into a policy which targets only specific zip codes, so practices that are in the Bronx are the ones that should be targeted and not ones in different parts of the New York City metropolitan area. So by targeting it, we reduce the chance for physicians to tire and ignore the alerts. We add additional details here as to how often we want to get reports back of the total number of patients seen that day that may have the condition of interest. Once activated, this report policy is now distributed to the specific clinics overnight. The next day, we see here the message inbox from the provider's point of view with a secure message saying there's a potential for legionnaires in the Bronx area. Now the provider has been prepped to look for patients that might come to his clinic that day with his specified conditions. If the provider wants to do more proactive follow-up at this point, he could use the registry report feature previously described to run a report of all patients meeting the alert criteria conditions he was reminded about in his inbox. So in our case, we just focused on patients in particular zip codes and in this test scenario the report shows one patient, Bob Jones, whereas in real life the provider could see many more patients. From this screenshot we can see that whenever the patient, Bob Jones, does come for a visit to the clinic, the provider will be shown on their right pane a registry alert with the report name that was sent out to the practice. So we see the DOHMH alert regarding Legionnaire's outbreak in the Bronx text. Now this provider may decide to do a more thorough examination for this patient considering his potential exposure to the affected area in the Bronx. And if it turns out that Bob is sick, the provider would have the necessary follow-up information already available to them by clicking on the alert to see the additional details which includes the appropriate contact information to inform public health officials. This represents an entirely new means for communicating between clinical and public health personnel. The clinicians now know in the context of a clinical visit what they need to do and how to follow up for a targeted group of patients. This is meaningful and novel healthcare IT. The final piece to illustrate is the report that comes back to the Department of Health from all the clinics where it was sent. In this screenshot, we show our test clinic as having 20 patients with the specified conditions during the reporting period. Now, our particular report was exclusively looking for patients in specified zip codes that may have been exposed to Legionnaires. However, the patient conditions could be defined to be any variety of symptoms or clinical characteristics necessary for identifying a particular outbreak. If it were an influenza outbreak, we would have included criteria to look for fever in the chief complaint or temperature above a certain threshold, and so on. So, this is a powerful tool for reporting and for understanding the health of the community. A public health official has the ability to look at a series of these reports from the practices on a regular basis, whether that's daily, weekly, monthly, etc., to get a perspective of what is going on with real patients. These features represent a powerful new means to communicate with providers at the point of care and to receive up-to-date feedback from existing EHR information at the practices. They can be used by public health officials to track and improve the health of our communities. In conclusion, we've covered a lot. We have looked at how a public health-enabled EHR can be used to meet both public health and clinical goals by leveraging the resources of public health practitioners more closely with the clinical care process. This is where patients actually receive the shots, where they are screened for disease conditions, and where the physician can act as that active intermediary to help the patient reach meaningful goals for chronic disease care, such as diabetes or smoking cessation. These are meaningful applications of healthcare technology. It's about linking the right resources to the right people at the right time to help patients throughout the community make the decisions to lead healthier and happier lifestyles. If you would like further readings on these topics, you can consult the reading list on this slide. The New York City Department of Health has built an ad hoc query and alert system that helps them identify emerging acute threats 
and monitor chronic disease issues throughout the community. Bidirectional immunization histories are providing information back to providers about their patients.